Today's topic, it's very normal. We all suffer from it, but it's extremely uncomfortable to talk about. But we are all about uncomfortable conversations, especially with your doctor. We're talking about vaginal order. And so if you have any questions or comments or experiences that you have that you want the doctor to advise you on, let us know with the hashtag Breakfast Daily and the WhatsApp line 550 585 now, my favorite doctor is in studio, Dr. Kelvin Owusu. Good morning. Good morning. And of course, he's a director of Optima Care Diagnostics. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm very well. And you? Good. I haven't uh, talked to you in yes, a while. I know. You, you abandoned me. <laughs> <laughs> now, vaginal order, is it abnormal in any way, shape, or form? Well, um, it can be abnormal, but mostly it's, it tends to be normal. What is it exactly? Well, I mean, odor is a sense. I mean, um, an unpleasant sense. Um, mm -hmm. But the fact that it's unpleasant doesn't necessarily mean it's abnormal. Okay. You know, and so let's just get off the table. Most uh, vaginal odor is actually normal. Okay. You know, just like uh, any part of the body that has sweat glands, like your, uh, your armpits. armpits, you know. So the vagina is also in an area where there are sweat glands as well. I mean, the whole, the groin area, the, 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 the thigh in between the thighs, there are sweat glands all over that place. And so sometimes, mm -hmm. or in fact, most of the time, um, the vaginal odor or the, the odor around the vagina um, is normal um, reaction to your daily activities. So maybe mm -hmm. so you, you, you had a busy day, the sun was, was shining very brightly, and so um, there, there was a lot of sweat, and the sweat stays in the area or stays in your clothing, your mm. undergarments, and then there's an odor. It's, it's, it's normal, or rather it's, it's a, the body's normal reaction to heat that would give off the smell. At what point should you be worried about the smell, though? So, um, so again, um, so back to the back, let's backtrack a bit. Now, every woman, or in fact, every human being has a peculiar scent. Okay. You know, be it from your armpit. I mean, if, if, if I wear my clothes and I, and I left it there and I came back and picked it up and I sniffed the armpit, I would know I wore it. And really? pre pretty much everybody can do that because everybody has a distinct kind of, kind of smell that comes, I mean, that, you know, yeah, your, your sweat smells like That's you. That's uniquely yours. Yes. Okay. So if, if two people wore the same dress, you could tell that, no, this was, I, I didn't wear this dress. This is not my scent. Mm -hmm. you know, so in the same regard, the, the area around the vagina also has a peculiar smell, a smell for every, every person. And, so, uh, you, you, and this smell, when it comes to women, um, the smell is not, uh, I, I don't know, I, I'm trying to find the right word. There's not one smell. There's not one size fit all. Yes, it's not the one. Because Every woman has a Even unique. for the particular woman, mm -hmm. your smell changes as your menstrual cycle progresses. Ah. You know, so at the, at the beginning, in, in the middle, at the end, there, there's, there can be variations in how it smells. And mm -hmm. so what I'm trying to say is that you, as the woman, need, need to know yourself. So that when you now notice a change, a smell that is unusual, something that you are not used to, mm -hmm. then you know you, you should be you should want to you should be concerned to find out more about this particular new sense that has come up on you. Okay. You know, and of course it goes to the partners as well because as a partner, I mean, of course, I'm talking about a long-term partner, a long-term relationship. You should you should know your 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 partner's you know sense sense variation. So now if there's something new, because it's possible that there might be a change, but the woman may not even be aware. So you, the partner, could be the one who prompts her. Of course, you have to prompt her nicely because, I mean, it's a very sensitive area and nobody wants to be told that, you know, your, your vagina is, is smelling. I mean, it's not, it's not a good thing to say. And so you should be careful or you, you should take note of these things so that if there's a change, you can also take note of it and then prompt the, the woman to seek attention if it's significant. How you do know. you even do that? Well, this one is not Politely. a doctor question, no. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let me go back to the doctor question. <laughs> What are some signs that you will see? Because okay. it might change, right? The yes. causes. So we do have some pictures. I must caution you guys because we know that it's very early. So, you know, the, the pictures are a bit visual. But it's important to put the conversation in context. So take a look at the images and then Doc would explain what's happening there. So, Doc, what are we looking at? So these are some of the some of the causes of vaginal discharge. That's I mean abnormal um, um, causes of odors. Okay. And so right now what we are looking at is actually the the, the cross section of the womb, the uterus. Okay. So the, the pictures at the top is showing a cross section of the womb, and the pictures at the bottom is showing the cervix, which is the mouth of the womb. Mm. Um, so this picture, for I mean, so now since we are looking at these things, so if if you are looking at the the woman, if the woman was lying down, the legs were raised, and you could see through the vagina. That's the picture that you 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 be seeing. The one on the bottom or the, the one, one on the, the bottom? Top? So that's what the, that's the picture. So if you look through a woman's vagina, 
you which see is lying what's down in the and, bottom. And you, look, you look through the vagina, you see that um, over there, and that's the cervix. Ah. You know that round thing with the dot in the middle. Okay. That is that is where um, th that's the mouth of the womb, um, okay. the, the gatekeeper. That's what allows the the, the 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 semen to go in, allows the menstruum, the blood to come out. So if that thing is closed, nothing is going to go in. You wow. Know? So now this particular picture is referring to somebody who has got um, something what looks like a cervical cancer. You know, so on the a, right? Yes, on the right. On, okay. the, on the right would be uh, somebody who has developed cervical cancer. Now, that can also cause a vaginal discharge and a vaginal order. You see, the thing is, most... Do they go together, the yes, discharge that's what I was going and to say. the order? Most of the time, you have a discharge with the order. You know, but it's not always like that. But most of the time, you find the foul-smelling discharge. Mm. It's the discharge, this, the discharge that tends to give off the, the order, anyway. And so, this is somebody who's probably suffering from a, a cervical cancer. cancer. Okay. And, and so, yes. Hmm. <laughs> so we have another one as well. Oh, what are we looking at here? Yes, yeah, so Ooh. this this is, um, um, as the name suggests, uh, vulvar vaginal candidiasis. I mean, candidiasis is very, pretty common um, in our setting because we have a lot of um, our, our humidity okay. in, in, our, in, our, in our environment, our, our atmosphere. And so um, candidiasis is very, very common in our setting. And unfortunately, some of our cultural practices also... Um, make this more likely to happen. Like what? Um, well, for one thing, most of our Ghanaian women, or I, don't know, I think it's an African problem, African issue, we, most, we, 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 we wash your underwear and you hang it inside in the bathroom. Uh, it's not a good practice at sunlight. all. You need sunlight because the sunlight sort of kills, uh, kills the, the bacteria, the spores. This is a fungal infection, so the spores. I think last week we touched on yeah. this. You need, you need sunlight to actually kill the spores. And so hanging your underwear in the bedroom, in the bathroom, will not allow the underwear to dry properly. Mm. And then, so, so the spores remain in there, and then you wear it, so pretty much you are reinfecting yourself over and over again. So you meet somebody, and the person has had candidiasis for God knows how many years. And it's essentially, she herself is re keeps infecting herself over and over again. So the reason why it's called white is because the discharge tends to be white. It tends to be whitish. But what we are looking at, is that the full lip? Yes. Or yes. So on the on the left we have the the full lip of the vagina. Uh, that's of, infected. Of the, so that's the vulva. Okay, that's so not that, the vagina. The vagina is the, or the the picture on the on the on the right. Um, so the vagina is the inside. The canal is the vagina. Mm -hmm. The outside, what you actually see, is called vulva. So that's the vulva. So the, on the left you have the vulva, and on the right you have the vagina. <laughs> I know in 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 layman's terms we we call everything vagina, but when it comes to medicine we have to differentiate okay. between the two. You know, and so this will bring me to another interesting thing. When we, when we as medics, when we as doctors say that do not wash your vagina, mm -hmm. right, there's always some controversy when it comes to that. We are referring to the inside. The You're not supposed to wash picture. the inside. You don't wash the inside. Why? Because the vagina takes care of itself, and that's so literal. You're not supposed to like. Don't put anything use, there. Use like the nothing. What nothing. Don't even mention it. Nothing. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Leave the vagina alone. Okay. It's perfectly capable of. It's it's an independent woman. Don't, no, no, don't touch so it. So independent women are supposed to be left alone? Yeah, well, the vagina <laughs> is, is to, supposed to be left alone. <laughs> so it's only the vulva you can that clean, you wash. You can do whatever you want to do to the vulva. Clean it, tattoo it, whatever is yours. Tattoo yours. it? Well, some people do all sorts of things to it. But don't touch the vagina. Okay. You see, the thing is, a lot of these um, um, discharges, a lot of these odor we are talking about, it's actually self-inflicted. Ah, because we tamper with the vagina. So let's, again, let's go back a bit. Now, the vagina has been created in such a way that there is um, um, symbiosis, where there's coexistence of bacteria. Mm -hmm. There's actually bacteria inside the vagina. That helps it clean itself. Yes, and the purpose of this, this bacteria is to pre produce acid. Ah. So the vagina has a pH, an acidic pH, which is aimed at preventing other unwanted bacteria, other unwanted things from staying in there. Because, I mean, again, the vagina is sort of open to the environment, so anything can literally go in. So now things go inside. The acid is supposed to kill those things off, mm -hmm. so it doesn't cause an infection. Now, when you introduce anything into the vagina, you disrupt this pH, which goes on to kill the good bacteria that we want to be there. And when the good bacteria has died, now nature abhors vacuum. So once the good bacteria have been killed off, there's a vacuum, and once there's a vacuum, guess what? The bad bacteria and the oh, bad fungi see. will now go and populate the place, and then you have what we call an infection. Wow. So most of these vaginal odor, vaginal discharge is self-inflicted. Hmm. Of course, there's always a normal vaginal discharge which is going on because of the menstrual cycle and all sorts of things. But once you interfere with this normal cycle, you cause problems for yourself. In fact, this candida that we, are, we just looked at is actually part of the normal flora. When you say normal flora, it's everybody, almost every woman has candida in there. Mm. 
But in the, the vagina, yes, not the vulva. In the inside the vagina. But because it, the good bacteria is there doing its job, the, the candida is not able to, to cause a problem. Okay. But once you kill off the good bacteria, now the candida begins to grow um, uncontrollably. And then you have candidiasis. Wow. You know. Related to that is something we call bacterial vaginosis. What's that? Now, bacterial vaginosis, again, um, it's, it's a form of... Th this time, the, the, some of the good bacteria... Be, be became over, bad. Yes, kind of. So they now start overgrowing. Wow. And so you have um, an overgrowth of the normal flora. And it's also, it could also be as a result of interference with um, the process. So you put soap in there, you put some scented things in there. And Why all... are those things on the market if they are not good for us? Because even the way they are made, <laughs> you're supposed to literally insert it and then squeeze it. So you're literally cleaning your vagina. This question, I think, is a question for the FDA. Okay. <laughs> but globally, they are on yes, the market. Yes, yes. Because, because people, people would believe whatever they want to believe. And also, it's a, like I said, it's, it's, it's cultural. Because a lot of our mothers will tell their daughters that you have to clean the place mm -hmm. because that's how they were brought up. You know, because how can I have a path in my body and you tell me that I shouldn't clean it? You know, because I clean my mouth. I mean, I, I, some people even clean their nose. I mean, so why can't I clean my vagina? It's mine. You know, and so there's, there, there has been this perception that I must clean it, especially since, like I said earlier, there are sweat glands in the area, so I must clean it. And so it has created that, I mean, that impression has led to an industry which is also trying to push their product. And so they are also saying all sorts of things to make it, you know, make it a viable business. And so it, it is what it is. It's on the market. But all we are saying is that avoid it as much as possible because the vagina takes care of itself. Is it okay to uh, just use water? <laughs> So just squeeze water there, or that's also problematic. So um, I would say, or most doctors would say, just leave the, leave it. It will take it takes care of itself. But if you must, if you feel a need to do something about it, just plain water is fine. Okay. You know, but as much as possible, don't even bother touching it at all. Okay. Of course, I mean during your your menses, I mean you want you want to wash down the place. Everybody understands that you know because it's uncomfortable and all that. And having said that, during your menstruation, obviously there's your your there's also an odor that's going to come out of there, especially. If you keep your, your pads, for pads or particularly the tampons, on too long. What's the maximum you should have a tampon on? I think, um, well, it depends. I mean, there are different, different, different qualities. Sizes. Different sizes. Yes, exactly. But I think, I think you should change it at least twice a day. I mean, oh, like, I think it's supposed to be like every four hours. Well, something. that's why I said at least. I okay. mean, but then you, you guys are, are experts at this than I am. <laughs> but don't leave it on too long because once the, 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 the blood comes out, stains the tampon, it, begins, it, it starts getting altered. Now, there's already bacteria in the area. Hmm. And bacteria will feed on the, on the, on the blood. And so if it stays in there too long, the, the interaction between the bacteria and the blood will also cause a sense. And so mm -hmm. if you don't change frequently, it's going, to, it's going to also start giving off a sense. And the interesting thing about vaginal odor in general is that the sense is more severe or more significant after sexual intercourse. Why? Well, because the whole act of, sexual, uh, of sex is, um, um, it, it, what's it called? There's um, friction, there's a lot of sweat, um, there, there's a lot of um, discharge as well. And so all these things come together to sort of make the, um, bring the, the, the scent up more. I mean, I don't know how else to describe it. <laughs> it's too early in the morning for this one. <laughs> well, the scent decrease if it's safe sex or it doesn't matter? It doesn't really matter. I mean, because like that, like I was saying, the whole sexual act itself, you know, it, it brings. It's very it, sweaty. Yeah, it's very sweaty, and it's, it's a lot of a lot of um, a lot of mixing, and uh, all sorts of things are mixing. So it's 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 it brings out the sense some more, and so um, you have to take note of all these things, mm -hmm. you know. But having, but that's what I'm also saying that every woman or in, in your partner, I mean, bringing the partners into the uh, conversation because they are also part of the whole this whole discussion because um, the woman might not even be aware. Like I was saying, most of the time it's actually the partners who complain about this thing. You know, hmm. because imagine the distance from the, from the nose to where the vagina is. Most women may not even be aware. But wouldn't your partner be further from you than you, like well, your nose when, to when, your... Well, when you're having sex, a lot of things happen. Ah, that, you know, okay. So, okay. Within that context. <laughs> exactly. Okay. And so most of the time, the partners are, are usually the first to actually take note of these things. So both of you should be aware of the uh, cyclical changes that the woman's body goes through. That gives a different, different sense. But even, I mean, for the women, for the women again... Even your normal body sense, sometimes during some part of the cycle, you, you yourself will notice some, some changes. You know, because there are some periods that you probably sweat, some, uh, sweat more than other, other periods. And so once you notice that these changes are going on and there are sweat glands in there as well, 
you know that there is going to be a change in that side as well. So you probably have to take your personal hygiene more seriously. So when, in case you, you identify this abnormal order, should you go out there and buy something to treat it or just maybe change your panties? You know, are there steps to take first before you, you, res you go to taking medicines and stuff like okay, that? Okay, so the first line of treatment, once you notice that there's been a change mm -hmm. outside of your normal, the first thing is to find out where to find out if your personal hygiene is to be blamed. Okay. You know, or in fact, no. Let me even take it back. The first thing is to find out if this the smell is from is related to the vagina at all. Okay. Because there are some causes of vaginal odor that are not even related to the vagina at all. How? It could be from your from your, your your anus is so close to the vagina that I mean it could it could actually not be vaginal related. Okay. So find out where exactly is this coming from? Is it you know from the front or from the back? And then after you found it, okay, could, could personal hygiene or better personal hygiene practices deal with this thing? And so if you, you're, you know, you're bathing more frequently, you are cleaning yourself better, and if it still doesn't help, then you have to seek a, a medical, medical advice. advice. Because we, and on, our, on our side, what we also have to find out is, is this abnormal at all in the first place? Mm. You know, is it, is it, is, could, it even be, could it be related to the cycle? Mm -hmm. Or could it even be the fact that um, she's keeping her tampon or her pad on too long? You know, so you come in, it's not, it's not automatic that you come in and we start giving medication, mm. you know. And so we do that. And if you find that we, well, sometimes we even go further and take a swab. I mean, in the picture we showed, you saw that they were taking a swab. swab so yeah. we would take a swab, go to the lab and analyze it to find out if this is an infection or not. Sometimes, um, some, um, very, some odors are, um, uh, what's it called? In medicine, we say pathognomic. Um, <laughs> like when you smell it, you know what it is. Like you know it's a normal smell. Or it's def this is definitely abnormal. Hmm. So somebody comes in and, and there's, it's a fishy kind of smell, bad rotting egg kind of smell. You know what it is. So that one, obviously, you start, you, you take a sample and start treatment even before the results come in, you know, because you know that this is definitely this. You know, there are other smells that have been described as well. So once, once you know what you're dealing with, then you can take, but the sample taking must be done mm -hmm. because you can never be too sure. Okay. So even though you'd start treatment, you'd want the results to confirm what you are treating. Would you recommend panty liners as, at, at all to keep it dry? Well, um, again, um, yeah, it's, it's, it all depends on how, how much discharge, because like I said, every woman has some discharge at some point, but it's not always going to be copious discharge that is going to, <laughs> you, to cause problems, you know. And so if you are, um, you, you are the kind of person who has that kind of um, discharge, copious discharge, that might stain your, your panty, of course, wear, wear a panty liner, but keep in mind, remember to change it, because mm. if you don't change it... So you it, don't keep it the whole day? No. Okay. I mean, as how much often as, do you change it? I, I, well, I mean, that would depend on how much discharge you are, you are having mm -hmm. and, um, and, and whether the discharge is smelling or not. Mm. Because, again, not all discharge smells. I mean, most, most normal discharge will not even have a scent. But even if you get normal discharge, should you still yes, use maybe a if, liner? Yes, if you get or... normal discharge. No, I mean, that's what I mean by it depends on how much. Okay. Because not all discharge is obvious. I mean, even you, the woman, you might not even know. Sometimes, if, if I, as a doctor, I'm not telling you that the woman is always having a, a form of discharge, you may not even be aware because you have never seen anything like that before. But there's always some amount of um, discharge to keep the, the bacteria, you know, because the bacteria must feed on something. <laughs> oh, so they need the discharge to yes, feed yeah, on. It's a symbiotic relationship, so they feed on something to produce the acid. Otherwise, if, they, if there's no discharge at all, they'll be dead because they'll be, they'll be starved. Okay. You know, so there's a, it's, a, it's a symbiotic relationship between the, 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 the human, the woman, and the bacteria. And so the bacteria feed on some of the discharge as well. Any last tips for us on keeping the natural uh, aura <laughs> of our vaginas? Okay, so as I was saying, um, most of vaginal discharge or um, vaginal odor is, is as a result of poor uh, personal, personal hygiene. hygiene. And so as much as possible, let's try and improve our personal hygiene So take a bath twice a day. At least twice a day. Clean the vulva thoroughly. I like that you said vulva. The outside. I mean, I'm, I'm paying attention. <laughs> the outside, you can do whatever you want to do with the outside. Don't touch the inside. Don't touch the it's inside. It's an independent woman exactly. that shouldn't be touched. <laughs> Please continue. Yes, so this, but you've ended it for me. So don't no. touch the inside. Don't put anything in there. No douching, nothing. It's, it's, it's capable of taking care of itself. So nothing to, should go in there at all. Except, of course, you are treating a, a, a health condition and the doctor has prescribed something for you to treat. And, mm -hmm. if you, and interestingly, most vaginal um, treatments don't go beyond the week. True. You know, and so, I mean, even if you were going to put something there, I mean, within a week, the treatment is, is completed. So leave the vagina alone, mm -hmm. you know. If you really feel a need to do something, just ordinary water is fine. Don't okay. put soap because soap is going to alter the pH. And once okay. the pH is altered, there's a problem.
Thank you very much, Dr. Kelvin <laughs> Owusu. Where do we follow you on social media? Um, well, I'm on Instagram at Nase Puku. And also on social media, I mean on, on Facebook, I am Kelvin Osaipuku Owusu. <laughs> Nase Puku, thank you so much. Of course, he's the medical director of Optima Care Diagnostics. I hope you've learned something right, about keeping your vagina clean, right? So you can share it with your wife or your partner and women as well. Pay attention. Uh, some of the order might be normal, but then when you notice an abnormal one, the first thing to do is pay attention to your personal hygiene. Don't touch the vagina, just clean the vulva. And then if the smell persists or you keep seeing the discharge, see a professional doctor. Hi guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, The City Tube. For exclusive breakfast daily content and other City TV programs. Like, comment, and share with your friends.